We continue to preview the 2024 college football season. Our stop today is Marion, Indiana, as we visit with Andrew Rohde, heading into his second season as the head football coach for the Indiana Wesleyan Wildcats. Coach, season one, year number one, uh, 10 and two record. I felt like it from an outsider's viewpoint, obviously, uh, I think it's a good start for for you and your tenure there at the program. It's a playoff team, an exciting year. You kept the fans and, and I'm sure your staff and everyone else on pins and needles with a few of those two-point conversions that were stopped along the way. But 9-1, and one, almost the undefeated regular season. <clears throat> and you, you make it to the playoffs. Defeat Morningside, no less, uh, as uh, that's the school from which you were previously coaching at. And just, again, an, an all-around good season, it looked like. Yeah, you know, it, it was a great season. And uh, the 9-1 and one start was... Uh, a little bit bittersweet. I mean, we're excited trying to get that 10th win, but, you know, Concordia came out and played really well and just flat out beat us. Uh, and then the playoff run, beating morning, having the bye week, then beating Morningside, and then the Georgetown game uh, felt closer than uh, what the score, you know, kind of showed at the end. But, man, it was a, a tremendous season, really proud of the guys. Um, and I think we're really proud of the culture that we established in those first uh, about nine or ten, nine or ten months um, you know, moving through the season and, you know, really what's kind of transpired in this off season has been, it's been tremendous growth and we're excited about the group of guys that we've got coming back. Coach, talk a little bit about some adjustments then of the off season heading into year two, you have your offensive <clears throat> and defensive coordinators that have been promoted into those positions. Talk a little bit about the staff. Well, you know, uh, I love the staff that we had last year. Um, you know, we, uh, we got through the first round of, hiring in kind of the coaching cycle uh, and everybody stayed. And then that second round, you know, we lost three full-time guys, but I think it provided an opportunity for um, me to kind of go back to the drawing board, look at our staff and figure out what we needed. And Travis Palmer ended up getting uh, promoted into the offense coordinator role and has done a tremendous job of learning, growing, and kind of starting to put his stamp on the offense. And then Austin Taylor, our co-defense coordinator from last year, uh, who did a great job. Obviously our defense was, you know, top of the nation in turnovers and uh, in a whole bunch of different categories. Uh, he has stepped in uh, and done a tremendous job just continuing the legacy of um, outstanding defense here at Indiana Wesleyan. In addition to that, we hired an offensive line coach, Drew Engels, who was a former coordinator at Erskine University in, uh, in the Carolinas, and he's stepped in and just done a great job with our own line. So overall, man, I'm, ex I'm really, really excited about the group of guys that we have. John Dutton, um, is a former Arena League player that has stepped in as coaching tight ends for us. And so we've got a really diverse uh, staff that's come from different places, has lots more experience. Um, and, and honestly, it's we're a far more experienced staff uh, this year than we were last year. Um, and so, and, and, and at the same time, I think we're very unified in terms of the mission of why we're coaching, how we're coaching our guys, and what the uh, what we're trying to accomplish. Um, inside and outside of football as we move forward. That's fantastic, Coach, then, to hear it like that, the way you described that. And, of course, you also talked about the culture that's been built up now in the last uh, last year. So uh, heading into this year, let's start talking about the the players and, and who you're going to send out there on the field. Some names that fans, I'm sure, are, are going to miss. <laughs> Sanders Stokes, uh, he's, he's, his time is now done, uh, along with Tay Williams. Uh, there's a lot of offensive production right there. Lucas Doyle, who was the uh, offensive lineman of the year in the conference last year. I mean, a number of solid players that just, you know, they, they've expended their allotment of time out there on the field. You do get Levi Tidwell back, who we had as one of our top five returning wide receivers for the NAI here on Midwest Sports Net. Tell us a little bit about the offense. It's going to look a little different. It, it will look a little bit different. Um, you know, losing Xander is he was just he's been a staple of Indiana was in football at the quarterback position for quite a few years. And just man, he he was always such a steady figure um, on the offense and provided so much stability. Um, and then, you know, outside and obviously he had a great career. And then, you know, Lucas Doyle and Tay, both All-Americans. When you lose two All-Americans, there's obviously some big shoes to fill. But uh, we're excited about some of the young guys that we've got that will be filling those spots. From an offensive line standpoint, we return almost everybody. Um, and then we've got two young guys that we feel like will be competing for that spot with uh, for, for Lucas's spot. Um, and then uh, in the running back room, man, it is 
uh, you know, we don't have Tay coming back, obviously, but man, it is, it's going to be a little bit more running back by committee uh, rather than having one solid guy uh, because what we've got coming in, I think we've got a lot of talented guys. I just don't know who it's going to be because they're all relatively untested. We've got two transfers, Roosevelt Cage and Ryan Whitwell, um, who have both, they're big backs, they're strong, they're great team guys. Um, you know, they've had, they had a great spring, uh, spring ball session and they're here for the whole summer. So they're doing a great job. Uh, Brock, Brock and Elijah Gibbs, both those two guys are young, um, smaller, but really, really fast, tremendous backs. They've got great vision. And so I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see what's going to happen. Uh, and then we got some freshmen coming in that we're excited about as well. So it's going to be a deep, um, a, a deep room, but eventually, uh, one or a few guys are going to emerge and, and become the guys. Uh, so we're just going to figure that out through the rest of the summer and fall camp. And it's going to be a really good group, though. Receiver-wise, you're right. We are bringing Levi back. It's fantastic to have him back. Um, on the last spring ball practice that we had, um, and so he's he's been out, but he's recovering really well, and so he should be ready to go as soon as we get into fall camp. Um, but, man, it's been uh, it's been a – uh, and it, 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 it's a really exciting room in that, you know, last year we had so many injuries uh, and we didn't have the same group of guys starting. You know, we, we had the same group of guys starting against Lawrence Tech and then uh, I believe it was Valparaiso the next week. And then we didn't have the same consecutive starters um, until the George, the Morningside and Georgetown games. Uh, so it was just a revolving door in and out of guys coming in playing for a week or two and then get hurt and then they'd be back two or three weeks later. And so we're hoping just a year of training, a lot more strength, a lot more conditioning. Those guys will be uh, a lot more durable walking into this fall and leave out, you know, he's, he's going to lead the way as the uh, seasoned veteran. Uh, but there is a group of guys underneath him. Isaac Smith only played about four and a half games healthy uh, and had 39 catches. Um, so that's, uh, you know, he, he's a guy that's going to be pretty dangerous. But then you've got Caden Curry, who uh, the few games that he played as a healthy player, he had, you know, he had a really good few games and then had a great spring, is having a really good summer. And so, you know, this could be a breakout year for him. Same thing with Blake Brumbaugh. We moved him over at the end of the season last year. Uh, caught one touchdown, had a couple decent plays, um, and then has – you know, been been trying to get healthy all spring. Uh, he's another guy that is a tremendous football player, and we'll just kind of see where things go with him. And then you got Miles Cox and um, and a handful of other guys that nobody even knows yet um, that uh, that we're excited about, and we're excited to see where where the season takes him. And then I think lastly, which is the major question uh, that everybody's asking, is who's the next who's the next Xander Stokes and who's the next quarterback? Um, and, and right now, probably the two front runners uh, would be Kyle Antoine from Heritage Christian, who is a uh, – he redshirted last year as a freshman for us. Um, so he's got four years of eligibility left. And then Arjun Lothi was at Hanover last year, played in a few games, and then transferred to us in the spring. Uh, both those guys have had a tremendous spring, gotten a lot stronger, faster. Uh, they've had great summers so – we're kind of just waiting and seeing who's going to who's gonna finish the deal and make the most plays and, and be ready for uh, week one against Madonna. Well, we're looking forward to getting to know who those players are that you said were unknowns at this point, but it, it should be fun to watch and, and see them grow and, and develop as players. We're visiting now with Coach Andrew Rohde from Indiana Wesley. And, Coach, on the defensive side of the ball, you get Luke Bays back, who had a ridiculous 124 tackles to lead the way last <laughs> year. Uh, ten and a half tackles for loss on top of that, a fantastic number. Clayton Mosier is going to come back as well. He was third on the team in tackling, and he didn't even play the whole season. So, uh, you know, you get some some good effort from him. Talk a little bit about the defense. Yeah, I mean, so just going back to front, uh, Preston Sykes is returning as a safety for us. He's kind of the premier, most experienced guy that we've got in the back in the secondary. Um, you know, he had an incredible season, probably would have led us in interceptions last year. Um, and, uh, and would have been up there in tackles as well, but got hurt and missed a couple of games that kind of set him back. 
Um, and then we're going to we're going to be young at the other safety spot and both corner spots. But we're excited about the guys that we've got. And, you know, there's some transfers that we brought in that, you know, we'll, we'll add a little bit of depth and we'll challenge uh, some of our starters for those spots. Uh, the linebacking core, you know, with Luke Bays, Clayton Mosier, and then really the third piece, it's up in the air. But we had um, a bunch of guys play last year. And then, uh, you know, with Matt Shager was a guy that was kind of in the mix. Um, Drake Deschetsky played a lot of football for us last year. And then Terry Sylvester is a young guy that is really talented that's pushing both of those older guys right now. So I don't know who that third piece is going to be right now, but I just know that our between those three spots, man, we might have one of the best linebacking cores in the country. So really excited about that group of guys. And then on the D, defensive line, um, you know, Caleb Williams, uh, who was a great player for us last year, you know, he didn't quite, he didn't get quite the attention that Isaac Abeo did, but he was just a rock for us in there. Really, really good football player and was coming off an off season where he didn't get to train at all due to a, a hip injury that he had surgery on. So he hardly any lifting and just kind of walked in and did his best. And then he's been lifting a lot. And uh, man, this has been an awesome off season for us, for him. And I think he's going to be a huge impact player for us coming this fall. And then on the other side, we got Anthony Cheeseboro who broke his ankle in the third game, missed the rest of the season. Um, you know, was out with surgery and all that stuff, but he's been training hard. He's gotten a lot bigger and stronger. And so those two guys on the ends, they are going to be a force to deal with. Uh, and then on the interior, Robbie Hunter comes back, which he's a seasoned veteran, played a lot, a lot of football over the last couple of years, and uh, will provide a lot of leadership and experience in the interior for us. Coach, a young kicker last year in Josh Clifton, but he was quite successful, especially with point after. Uh, he had 47 for 47 points after. You just can't get much better than that. And uh, field goal, better than 50%. A couple of his that were misses were beyond 50-yard attempts. So, uh, obviously, it's a good place to start for special teams. Yeah, jo Josh is going to be – he's going to be fantastic for us this coming fall. I mean, perfect on extra points. Um, and, and we put him out there on a couple long field goals, and we know that. But he also broke the uh, Ben von Guten's record, who Ben was an All-American. Uh, and so he's, he's got the leg for it. I think what we're going to see this year is just um, a much greater consistency out of him uh, in terms of those, mid, specifically the mid-range field goals, mid-range to kind of the long-ish field goals. I think he's going to be able to hit a lot of those things uh, as we walk into this fall. All right, Coach. Well, it gets underway Saturday, August 31st, and you're going to be on the road at Madonna. Uh, that's a, it's actually a, a Mideast game, uh, first game of the season. You get to take on a divisional opponent there, then you're back at home the next Saturday, September 7th, against St. Francis, Indiana, and then <clears throat> go back to uh, go back on the road again, and you get an FCS opponent, Division One Valparaiso. You got the big win against them last year and you get to go play at their place. Tell us a little bit about the opening to your season. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I think the opening, you know, between an, a, a long away trip uh, at Madonna uh, with a brand new staff, new defense coordinator, we don't those guys. So, you know, you're, you're kind of walking into a little bit of an unknown, um, which is always scary. And I'm sure, you know, they were getting a lot better. Um, like they got a lot better this last fall. And obviously they have a coaching change. So that that's not a game that we're taking lightly. I mean, it's going to be a long road trip for us and it's opener and there's nothing more than uh, Madonna wants nothing more than to uh, come out and, and get a big upset. So that's going to be a, a challenging, but really fun game. And then you go back and we got St. Francis, Indiana, which they are always good. Um, and a lot of, they were young and talented last year. Now they lost Joey Didier, their defensive coordinator. And so I'm, Curious to see what, what's going to happen with them on defense and where they're going to go, but because uh, I thought he was a tremendous football coach. Um, but that's they're always a, a challenge to play. And then, yeah, you're right. We come back and we got an FCS opponent you know, at night at Valparaiso, uh, which is going to be a monster. But you know, I don't think, Joey, those first three games are any different than the rest of the season because all of a sudden you turn around and it's just like game after game after game after game of talented you know talented teams that are tough and and a lot of them are getting better like you know, Taylor's getting better and um, it's going to be uh, 
a really, really challenging year. And, and you look at Concordia too, it, you know, we're getting them at the end of the season and that's a, that's a team that is going to be fighting hard uh, mm-hmm. as they've got one season left. So it's going to be, it's going to be an animal to get through this 11 games unscathed. And 11 games this year too. That's a, it was a 10 game slate last year, 11 games. And then for you all, you hope to have that opportunity to play in the second season, your playoff team last year, pushing for that again. Coach, it seems to be in good hands, though, there in Mary, and appreciate what you're doing there. We're going to follow the Wildcats this season. Coach Andrew Rohde heading into his second season with the program. Thank you so much, sir, for taking time with us today to preview the Wildcats for 2024. Thank you, Joey. It's going to be a fun season.